Hello, I'm standing on the spot where our congregation worshiped for 100 years. Our church had its beginnings in 1829. We were known as the Court Street Methodist Church until 1930 when the congregation made the brave decision to move to Cloverdale Park. The move to Cloverdale was difficult and made more so by the impact of the Great Depression. Just as the buildings were nearing completion and the congregation looked forward to moving in, a horrific explosion destroyed the new church. Soon, it appeared the congregation would forfeit their new buildings to creditors as money ran out and the depression deepened. Through it all, the congregation stood strong, knowing that God had a plan far greater than the difficulties they were facing. So where did I begin to talk about uh, the First United Methodist Church respite ministry and what it meant to my husband, Ed, how they made him feel that his life was valued, how they made him feel that he was needed. All that played such a part. The music, the art, the exercise program all extended the quality of his life until he passed away in June of 2017. And I am forever grateful for that. Can you imagine First United Methodist Church Montgomery without a music program? That is one of the things that I think drew my family to First Methodist. I have had children that were so excited when they became a member of the three and four year old choir and came home every Wednesday singing the songs they'd learned. As my kids have grown older, they're now in the youth department. They know they are a part of worship and they are leaders and that music sets the tone for the service and it's an important part to my family and us being at this church and worship, and we can't imagine not having music at First Methodist. We take a vow when the kids are baptized to raise them in the way they should go, and the children's ministries has been a big part of, uh, of helping us do that. The partnership between parents and, and children's ministries is really strong. Small groups are something new to the youth group that has really impacted my life. My small group meets weekly and we talk about our relationship with God and our future plans. This helps me remember that I have people supporting me and praying for me each and every day. I'm very grateful to be a part of the First United Methodist Youth Group. I'm currently in a small group with seven or eight of my peers in my grade at the church and we meet once a week and we get to have real deep conversations about what it may be that we're struggling with or what books of the Bible we want to look at. It's really good for me just to have a group to hold me accountable and I can help hold them accountable. Hopefully we can grow closer to the Lord by meeting each week. After a few years, I became a member of the Senior Adult Council and I learned there was so much more offered for the seniors and it, there were many volunteers that reached out and touched the lives of our older adults. Some of the programs that the seniors can participate in are a visitation and greeting card ministry. Also there's an exercise group, there's carrying casseroles for members that have come home from a hospital stay, there are Sunday school classes at John Knox and Oak Grove, and many other things that are offered. I'm just so glad to be a part of this group that does so much good in so many ways for our older adults. I've been a member of the church since 1959, and these programs are becoming more and more personal. As we review these programs and improve them, we can reach out, be actively aware of the needs of the seniors in our church. God's faithful legacy to us as church is his constant support in our work in the world as we seek to have a lasting impact in the lives of others. Church leaders who have gone before us faced challenges in the past. and We face them today as well. Some of these challenges will require us to raise capital to address these matters. The trustees have approved a capital campaign which Dave Borden and John Bell have agreed to co-chair. Beginning in 2014, 
An extensive long-range planning process resulted in Plan 2020. Now the trustees, clergy, and staff have reviewed the plan, concentrating on the capital goals needed to move our church forward. The Impact Campaign will build on God's faithful legacy to First United Methodist Church, helping us to ensure that our many ministries continue their lasting impact. The Impact Campaign is not aimed at new construction, but rather focused on renovation, maintenance, and better utilization of our current spaces. Staying within the existing footprint of our current campus allows us to not only update spaces, but better utilize them and plan for the future. Let's look at what a successful impact campaign could do to support God's work. A planning team led by Ken Upchurch and John Hunter Foshi spent months reviewing the current use of all of the buildings on campus with staff and key lay stakeholders. A majority of the spaces in our magnificent church facility will be improved or renovated with the comprehensive impact campaign. A successful impact campaign will enable us to renovate the FUMC children's ministry spaces in the original education buildings. A large general assembly space will be included in these upgrades. First School will continue to share these renovated spaces. ECDC will undergo renovation in their current space and will be given additional existing square footage for expansion. The impact campaign will provide upgrades in our youth facilities. Painting, renovation of the youth canteen, and furniture upgrades will create better spaces to house the FUMC youth programs. The church has acquired property adjacent to the church campus. A successful impact campaign will enable the church to add much needed additional parking spaces to the south parking lot. A successful impact campaign will enable the church to more quickly address air conditioning inadequacies, poor water drainage, exterior mold on sandstone surfaces, and other maintenance. Perhaps no space is more used at First Methodist than Fellowship Hall. It is our family space for meals, funeral visitations, wedding receptions, and other occasions. It also serves as the church's living room during public receptions and gatherings when visitors call. Long overdue for renovation, the impact campaign will enable us to renovate this space, put our best foot forward, and enjoy an improved gathering space. There are 12 very active choirs at First Methodist who currently use a cramped rehearsal space with limited storage. The choir room will undergo renovation with new storage, better robing areas, and a general upgrade. The current organ was installed in 1969. It is 50 years old. A successful impact campaign will enable us to purchase a new organ, which should last for 75 years or longer and lead future generations in worship. The new pipes will be installed in a pipe encasement that will complement the Raridos and as was intended in the 1930 sanctuary design. In addition, much needed sanctuary, acoustical treatment, lighting improvement, television sound, and camera upgrades will be accomplished. We are blessed to be heirs of God's faithful legacy here at First United Methodist Church. We owe a debt of gratitude to previous generations whose love, prayers, and sacrifice helped to build our congregation and to those who have supported it for 189 years. Now, if First United Methodist Church is to have a lasting impact, it's our turn to take up the mantle and to carry the torch. I hope that you will join in support of the Impact Campaign so that we may continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the world. If we prayerfully consider our financial commitments, I believe God will bless us in this campaign.